So recently in my house, I was finally able to get around to putting up a bunch of posters that I had sitting around in a tube for a while because I finally got some kind of frame for them to put them up on the wall and appreciate them in all their beautiful glory. And one of my favorite ones that I had picked out that I put up kind of front and center in the whole gallery of pictures was this beautiful colorful piece called Synchromy. It's based on this art movement called synchromism, which basically has the theory that color and other senses, specifically sound, are related to one another and can be expressed together. Now this idea, while it may be bizarre to some, is not entirely unheard of. In fact, it is based on a real phenomenon that people can experience called synesthesia. <laughs> I'm not going to say that word, am I? Synesthesia. Synesthesia. Oh, yeah, I did it. Okay, woohoo. Synesthesia is the kind of experience that a person can have where two completely unrelated senses are experienced together. And one of the most popular forms of synesthesia is the connection between color and sound, similar to the idea that this painting and this art movement was based off of. Now you may be one of these people who experiences synesthesia. It can come across in a variety of different ways. Usually though, it's a thing of when you hear a certain pitch or a certain tone, you imagine a certain color. The two are always connected. So the same tone or pitch will usually always produce the same exact imagining of a specific color. For example, a C might always be red to one person, whereas it may be blue to another person. But for those with synesthesia, they will always imagine the same tone the same way every single time. And it's a really interesting phenomenon. There's a whole bunch of variations of this to have synesthesia. It doesn't always have to be color and sound. It can be with numbers or it can be dates or instead of color, it could be the way that things are arranged in a space. It's basically any two senses that you can imagine that would be normally unrelated being connected in some kind of way. And scientists estimate that you're roughly like two to four percent of the population experiences this in some way, shape, or form, which is a surprisingly large amount of people. So of course, with all of this in mind, it seems like a really fascinating subject to talk about in terms of music, especially since the color music one is one of the more common forms. And in fact, a lot of creative musical people do report to have experienced this phenomenon. There are tons of modern composers and artists who are self-reported experiencing synesthesia. And in fact, there's a lot of historical composers who also have experienced this phenomenon too, such as Rimsky Korsakov, Franz Liszt, Jean Sibelius, and even Duke Ellington. So thinking about this trait really makes the rest of us wonder, what is it like for those people who experience this on a day-to-day -day basis? What would it be like to listen to a very colorful piece of music? Well, enter in Alexander Scriabin. Scriabin is known for his association between color and music. He's reported to have synesthesia and in fact surrounded himself with composer friends who did also experience synesthesia, but it's slightly speculated on as to whether or not he actually experienced synesthesia because the way he reported it was very systematic. For most people, experiencing the color sound synesthesia res results in a kind of mishmash of colors. You may have C B brown, D B blue, E B light blue, F B red, G B uh, purple, and so on and so forth, and there's not really much order or reason to the specific colors being associated in the way that they are. Screenlabin's self-reported colors, however, followed pretty closely with the circle of fifths. 
C was red, G was yellow, D was orange, so on and so forth. The whole thing was very systematic and caused a lot of people to speculate whether or not he kind of just kind of forced himself to associate certain colors with certain tones, or if it really was a thing of he happened to visualize it in a very systemic kind of way. But regardless of whether or not he actually experienced it, Scriabin himself was very fascinated by the connection between color and sound. And he in fact took it to the point of writing a whole big symphonic piece with the intention of connecting color with sound. And that piece is Prometheus Poem of Fire. So back in the day when Scriabin was starting to come up with this idea at the beginning of the turn of the century, Scriabin was starting to get into more, more atonalish music composing and writing and was starting to focus more on the overall effect of the piece rather than keeping it within a specific key signature. Scriabin was not the only composer to do this, but he was definitely one of the ones that was kind of pushing forward on the boundaries of this, so to speak. But with this piece specifically, Scriabin really liked the idea of connecting the music with color. And when he was writing out all the different parts of this piece, one instrument he specifically wanted was something called a color organ, or something he called a color organ, because it wasn't really a thing that had been invented. It was sort of his own kind of imagining of what he wanted this instrument to be, but nothing of the time really existed, and Scriabin never really took the time to invent whatever this organ, color organ thing was. And so in the initial performance of this piece, this color organ was just left out. But Scriabin had this intention to have this organ that would light up different colors when certain tones were played. The reason why this never really came to be was that Scriabin never specified what how exactly this was supposed to work and exactly what kind of colors were supposed to line up with it. Because Scriabin didn't necessarily associate a certain note with a color, he associated more like a key tone with a color. So if you were generally in the key of C, that was red. If you were generally in the key of G, that was yellow. So it more had to do with whatever tonal center you were around rather than what was the exact note that you were playing. So you can kind of already kind of see how this is causing problems. It's not like I'm pressing these notes on the keyboard, so therefore it's going to light up maybe like on the front of the piano. It's more, I'm in this general tonal center, and so I want it to light up this one particular color. It is kind of interesting when you listen to Prometheus, you would, can understand what he's going for because the whole piece doesn't really center around a specific tone. It's not always in the same key. So it does move around a lot and it would be nice to see that color shift from one to another. But then comes the problem of how do you know which color you're in at the moment? And that was kind of the problem that the color organ ended up having. Do we go by the lowest note that's playing? Do we go by whatever the composer decides? Because the other problem was Scriabin didn't really specify what colors he wanted. He kind of just expected people to know what colors he was talking about. He kind of treated it almost as if it was a universal understanding that everyone should know what color he was talking about, but I digress. <laughs> And in fact, it wasn't even specified as to how this organ was supposed to show its colors. Is this something we light up in the concert hall on the walls and the whole entire room is filled with color? Or is it just kind of like on a screen in the front of the piano that the audience is supposed to look up on? None of this was specified at all. And so of course the whole piece had problems with the color aspect of it and the piece was performed just as is. It wasn't until much later on when people started coming back to this idea that people started exploring how can we make this work? 
In more recent times, this piece has still been performed without any kind of color involved, but more and more people are trying to explore the idea of connecting color with music. How can we make the two connections? There's a really great example of this on YouTube that was a performance done by the Yale Symphonic Orchestra where they lit up the whole concert hall in different colors roughly based on how the tone is sounding within the piece at that moment in time. There's not an explicit association such as what Scriabin had with associating certain tone centers with certain colors of the rainbow, but it at least changes, generally speaking, based on whatever tonal center or mood or color that the music is having in that moment. All of this is just really to say that thinking about the concept does make me curious as to what very colorful works of music sound like to a synesthetic person. Are there certain songs they prefer over others because of the way they can visualize them? Are there songs that really turn them off because the colors are just all over the place? I don't know. I'll probably never know, but it is something that's interesting to think about. So are you synesthetic in any way, shape, or form? Do you know somebody who is? If so, tell me about it in the comments down below. Have a little discussion. I'd like to hear about it. And with that, I shall see you next time. Goodbye!